in May of last year, I went to New York City. New York City, sit it, sit it, sit it, New York City. I was there for two weeks. Almost lost my job. They like fired me three months later. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they uh, they paid for my uh, hotel like downtown New York, man, Manhattan, right by the subway, and just like uh, a few blocks from Times Square. It was crazy. I bought all these comics uh, in New York, New York City, New York City, City. I think, yeah, this is like, what, just like all the stickers I got there. Uh, this Jack Kirby exhibit, I made it the last day was my first day there. And uh, while I was in New York City, <laughs> uh, one of the buildings that I had to visit for my job was Neil Adams building. And... Uh, yeah, I went to Neil Adams' office. I was like, holy shit, that's an advertisement for Continuum Comics? Fucking Neil Adams? So I went on my lunch hour, which turned out to be two hours, and my boss got mad at me. And then I showed him the uh, piece of artwork that I got from Neil Adams' office. And he was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? It's a poster from 8-Ball. No, poster from, uh, damn, what was it? Black Hole shit, sorry. Uh, same era. This is it. I just need two hands. I gotta get this shit out. Hold up. Check this out. Oh, I got this at a subway. Subway station. New York City. Just uh, underground in one of the tunnels. And, uh... Uh, yeah, Seven Comics. I worked at this place for a week. And then I quit. Because I got that job and, uh... Well, they took me to New York City and then I, like, worked in the Detroit area for them and then they fired my ass. Uh, hold up. Yeah, it was bullshit. Whatever. I'm like, you guys aren't giving me any training? Uh been here for two weeks and I've had like four days of training is what the something's not right here yeah and they're like oh no don't worry about it don't worry about it when you when you work from home and you go do whatever you're gonna oh we got you covered and I'm like no you did, wait huh yeah it was whack but there's a bar uh on the East Village Avenue C called Studio 151 it's got two doors the door on the right, it's black. That one goes up. Really awesome bar run by these Swedes. Some Scandinavian cats. Sick. The bar is awesome. Door on the left, stairs go down. Some like James Bar looking type of scene. It's amazing. I mean, some type of jazz that was playing, jazz funk. They were matching beats that this DJ played and people were dancing. This terraced. Seating with like red light in the back, silhouetted people sitting on it. All like the, the chairs and tables. And up, led up to this bar. The catwalk that overlooked everything, all like glass and white and clean. It was this dope ass bar, Studio 151, uh, just east of Tompkins Park. This was by the Fashion District. Uh, just fuck, like around there. <laughs> Look it up. I uh, stopped by his office. Uh, I'm just kind of doing this on the fly now that I'm thinking about it. Kind of wish I had looked it up before I done this vid, but yeah, I went to his office and I'd like to say he'd do this for me on the spot, but he didn't. I was so like starstruck. I was like, first thing I said, I was like, yo, like thank you for what you did for Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, helping to fight for their rights to get just like health care and some type of residuals. And he was like, oh yeah, sure. And he was in the middle of doing, a, I think, a commission drawing. There were some people in the lobby waiting for him. Um, maybe it was some work. I, I didn't ask. I just didn't want to take up his time. Because I just stopped by during my lunch hour. And I explained to him really quick. 
that uh, I'm from the Detroit area, and I was going to go to the Motor City Comic Con. I was going to see you, and now I'm here because I'm missing it, and yet you're here. And uh, he got a kick out of that, and he said to, uh, I think it was his son-in-law, he was like, yeah, just take him on the tour. And I thought, oh, cool, he's going to show me all his artwork on the walls, which they did. And then, you know, uh, that's what's great about that channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. You want to talk about, like, you know, the kayfabe, right? To break kayfabe on that, I guess he just was like, yeah, take him on the tour. Because at the end of it was the merchandise, the prints. I got one print that I gave away. Um, but then I bought this. And this was $150. Uh, I'm being honest. So, um, what is this now? Compiles to California. All right. Anyway, yeah, so, um, I don't know. Maybe some people get the, got this thing for 100 Um, but, I mean, that's original artwork. And... I'm impressed. I'm a satisfied customer. Thank you, Neil Adams. Just saw him, shook his hand at the Comic Con, the Michigan Comic Con at Cobo Hall in downtown Detroit. That's not the Motor City Con. Uh, that's in no way. Anyway, um, he's in one of my videos just off in the distance. Anyway, uh, yeah, this Jack Kirby exhibit was amazing. And went to Midtown Comics. And went to the other one that was down by, like, uh, downtown. And uh, there was a view of the Freedom Tower. It was rainy. I could hear their staff talk about how they got off being an asshole. It's really weird. They couldn't tell I was near them. It was, like, empty. I was the only one there. And I bailed on that and made it to uh, the Mysterious Time Machine. Um, the best comic book shop in New York City. New York City City. Yeah, get there before 6, after 4. Get there. They, they give away shots of like booze, tequila, rum. It's just like real small looking shop. Um, you have to go down some stairs. BYOB, you can bring your own booze. Ah, uh, so many comics. Holy shit. Do you want to see what I got? Homies. Six. Number about six. I'm working on getting doubles of the first 20. As soon as I get issue number five, um, at least I'll have doubles of the first 10. And then I'll need like 11 through 14. And then I'll have doubles of the first 20. And then my life will not be content because there's always more. Like Cobra number nine by IDW. Cobra 19, excuse me. That cover is... One of my favorite covers. Dose. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, the Koch Warehouse. Yeah, I took that video from that flip phone. Uh, Corbin, Richard Corbin. Is that the fall of the House of Usher? It's issue one, first print. There's only one printing. Heavy liquid. This is amazing. Paul Pope. Uh, this is weird. This is like this thing that you put in your ear. It's like a drug. It's synthetic. They, uh, gives you abilities. It's, um, I 
It kind of has its own intelligence. Man, I haven't read this in so long. Vertigo. Uh, rest in peace. Heavy liquid. Uh, if you're new to Paul Pope, I, I suggest heavy heavy liquid. A strong dose. Yeah, it's a crazy ride, definitely. Check it out. I love uh, comic books that are about learning. Even if it's like some marketing ploy from Radio Shack, I love stuff that has information, history, or historical fiction. More than superheroes, right? Sequential. Dig it. Yeah. I knew you could, right? Dejo Thoris, um, Frank Cho, he was pretty, uh, he was quite frank, he was very uncanny in his depiction of Marvel Comics, uh, when, when was this, Motor City Comic Con, yeah, damn, I think a couple years, shit, I do not recall, Frank Cho was in Michigan at a comic book convention. It might have been the Michigan Comic Con that was last year, but I think it was the Motor City Comic Con. No guy. Anyway, this guy did not like Marvel. Uh, these books by Josh Bear, Benjamin Morrow. Like Crime Destroyer, Killer Covers. Uh, Fanographics made a storybook. Superhero storybook. Superhero line. It's kind of like a spoof on superheroes. Um, got terrible reviews. I just look at it as like a state of mind. I think it's fun. Um, I don't take it that seriously. And I don't think it's supposed to be. But the artwork here is so fucking awesome. Yeah. Josh Bear, Ben Amada. This is amazing. It's like mysticism and uh, uh, ancient mysticism and sci-fi, uh, building portals. Um, as you can see, the artwork is amazing. Jean Marie Michaud. Ditko. Yeah, I got this one at uh, Bruce Tim. I got this one at um, Mysterious Time Machine. Go to Mysterious Time Machine. BYOB, get like a tall can of beer, put it in your inside your pocket of your jacket, you know, get a couple of uh, fists, you know, stick them underneath the coat, bring it inside, mysterious time machine, Wednesday, early evening, 4 or 5 o'clock, you will not be disappointed, everybody there is so cool, just talk shop. Chill on that. Thank you.
Yeah, I just got the subscribe and save deal. Because it's got the surfer in it, some New Jersey uh, place. Real Life Comics presents Health Man. The AIDS Crisis. Check that out. I love that lowbrow stuff. The boys. Yeah, I had to get that Dark Knight cover swipe issue. Cool looking. This was at the Koch warehouse. They had a lot of those in here. World Hardball League. This has the craziest images. This is issue number four. I don't know why I got just number four. I think it was the only one that had white pages. Uh, but, yeah. It's just awesome artwork. Um, I'm surprised nobody knows about this. World Hardball League. What the hell does that say? Titus Press, 95, 1995. <laughs> Revenge of the Prowler, this has like a, a flexa disc inside of it. Not all of them have that. This is the uh, first issue. So actually, I think the flexa disc is in the second issue. Anyway, it's fun. Uh, issue 19, I just lost its place, shit, hold up, where does that go, okay right here. Features uh, Prince and George Clinton. But yeah, I got it because of Prince. Definitely. I know that uh, Revolutionary Comics, I can't remember his name, but I know he's from Detroit area. One of the founders, uh, possibly artist. Rumor is killed by his ex lover? Not sure. Sorry. I'll let you know when I get my facts straight. To be continued. X Men Unlimited Sinkovich cover. Definitely. I'm gonna buy that. Issue 3. 43. Yeah, direct edition. Rockers number 7. Okay, now these I think I started getting out. Um, oh, no, wait, these are still at the Koch Warehouse because eventually I went to St. Mark's. Uh, that's a no-brainer, but I don't think that's open anymore. One-shot parody issue. Caution, this is not a Marvel comic. Black Jean lives again. Pronounced Zmen. One syllable. Uh, 1980. Wait. See. Cannot see the date. Anyway. Near to now, they didn't have any information on this book. Um, I think it has some Schuster artwork in it. Um, Jerry Siegel. Excuse me. Let's 
that's a thing. I only got so much money. I want to take care of this stuff. It says, um, so I can't read it. I just bag and board them. I look for them online. No DBF. No image. No description. Yeah, this was the one. Near to now. Issue number two. Amazing. Yeah, the X-Men, State Fair of Texas, good times. I seen the Pegasus, oh yeah, oh yeah, I saw the Pegasus, oh hell yeah, I saw the Pegasus, man, uh -huh. <laughs> Key and Peel. sorry. It's a flying horse. That can't be a Pegasus then. That's a Minotaurus. Right, you know it's a new stand already because of that CC. Uh, it stands for like Curtis Comics and it's Curtis something. Anyway, that's a new stand. You see that CC there? Even if there's no barcode and you're not sure, you see the CC right there? That's a new stand. Uh, rumor has it. Hit me up if I'm wrong. But yeah, this was like, whoa, when this came out, it was like, whoa, come on now, what's going on? Because Marvel Superhero Secret Wars was going on, and uh, figuring things out about what happened uh, during that time was pretty cool. Especially about how Spider-Man got his suit, and who Spider-Woman was, and who the hell, what the hell, huh? What happened, where, when? Yeah, Secret Wars, uh, it wasn't just an event. It was a timeline that everybody had to live through for the next 12 months to figure out what the heck happened. Uh, all the stories took place one year later. King size annual four. Two seventy five. Yeah, it's direct. Whatever. And white pages. Rockers number five. <laughs> Doesn't that remind you of Joe Sacco? Watch that is his work. I don't see his name. Hmm. Rip off press, by the way. Thomas Jane. What's up, Thomas Jane? I met him at a Seattle convention, Emerald City Comic Con. He goes, You do sequential? Got a big cigar sticking out of his face. He's hanging out with uh, Tim Bradstreet. I'm like, Man, I draw. He goes, Did you bring any? I'm like, No. This is awesome. Sean, Patty, Warguard. I definitely went through this. Uh, couldn't resist. This is just, man. I don't understand why Marvel doesn't do uh, stuff that's more like this. Even black and white. This is awesome. Word Warriors want to learn how to read? They'll help you. Serious. For sure. For sure. Moment. Damn. For a buffet. What are you? We're warriors. What? I can't hear you. We're warriors. Oh, I lost my place. <laughs> it's on the other side. Oh, yeah. Well, they had a lot of these at the Couch Warehouse, man. The, the Dallas Hollows.
Shit, man, I gotta figure out where the hell they put this thing back. Uh, nah, there's the word warriors. Yeah, stranger kisses. One shot. Uh -huh. Of course, I had to get two. They're just like a buck a piece. The world. Z. <laughs> HP Lovecraft. Uh, Tome Press. Something like that. Caliber Comics. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. This is so killer. Look at this. Look at this. Sinkevich cover. I recommend Brotherhood big time. This got discontinued because of 9 11. Oh no. Yeah, um. They had two. Uh, Sinkevich did the first three issues, I believe. Um, not recalling. Maybe Glenn Fabry did the other covers. First print, black hole number one. Charles Burns. What's up? Yeah, I got, uh, look at the covers of this. This is, um, Adventure Comics. And, um... I know there's the Marvel Logan's run, which is great, but the covers on these and the story on this uh, Venture Comics one, uh, when you get a chance, dollar bins, keep an eye out for it. It's really beautiful work. And speaking of beautiful work, Mr. James Labar, how you doing? Caliber Presents, number two. You got a little schmutz there, but... Uh, Nice jacket. Caliber presents number three. Excuse me, five. Forty eight pages. Comico. Oh, yeah, babes and biomechanics. Look at the name of the artist. Simonton, 1989. Sorry if I read that name wrong. Simonton. Simonton 99. Damn, dude, your handwriting there, Simonton. I'm not feeling it right now. What I am feeling is this is a pretty dope ass cover now. I'm feeling your artwork is just like. Okay. 
heavy metal. Berlin 22. I just need Berlin number 17, and I got the whole run. 22 is the last issue. This one, I'm thinking. She's gonna need a shower after that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I just got the trade for this. Uh, another one of those things where you just like, I bag them, board them as soon as I get them. This is the uh, sub cover. The sub cover, Frederick Comic Book, History, Comics. Um, what is it? Four issues. Uh, the B cover is a sub cover, subscription cover. And uh, actually, they do, IDW does have sub covers, but this does just say cover B. Um, so, yeah, this camera sucks, but, anyway, it's all international, this one's Brazil, um, Kenya, issue number two, <clears throat> um, so, um, Back to this is Lindsner. Uh, we did some Mystique covers for that tsunami run that Sada did. I think it was before the next gen, or Gen Y, or whatever the hell, Gen Next. I don't know. I don't know whatever that Aranya cover had, Gen Next. Before that, he did Tsunami. Lindsner did the uh, Mystique covers. They were amazing. Um, check those out. Keep an eye out for those. This is just a really lovely, amazing uh, Betty Page by Linsner. So I like it. It's historical, timeless aspect of it. Um, what's up, Mighty Mike? Alright, so let me figure out. Here we go. Pretty sure this babes and mechanics goes like right here. Yeah. Alright. Season of the Snake. Uh, that other one was the B cover. This is the A cover. Just amazing. Killer artwork. Uh, great story. Uh, Stat Express. Titan. But, um, yeah, this is another one of those things that I just bag and board, um, because, like, man, how much was this book? I don't know. I don't see the price. How much does this shit say right here? Does anybody got a barcode reader? Oh, I can't see shit. My eyes are just shot right now. Four ninety five. Something like that. Yeah, I fuck it. I'm back and board that shit. It's too beautiful. Um Yeah, that's the type of stuff that like I'm just gonna back and board it. I'm sorry. I respect people that mean ooh. If you don't read them, yeah, those are the people that I like have a steady income and like don't have to worry about the condition of their comics to resell. Midtown comics. Careful. Oh yeah. This is eighteen dollars. This is 
10 bucks. The Star Wars, based on uh, Lucas's script, uh, Midtown Comics cover. It's nice. No patrol. No patrol! Baby Angel X. What's up, baby? Oh, baby. Mature Readers, number two, 295. Uh, yeah, Brainstorm Comics. <laughs> so dope. Fucking A. Yeah, uh, Simon Beasley, right? This is a Simon Beasley cover. Uh, Alan Grant story. The Demon number 12. Cheech Wizard. Fawn Baudet. This is 50 bucks. This is at St. Mark's Comics. So are those first few. Uh, we have a Null Patrol. I got it St. Mark's Comics. Uh, this Cheech Wizard. Please do your homework. Uh, anyone that's even into like street art, graffiti art, um, Bon Bode, um, Sun does comics, but uh, please check out this cat. Sorry, I want to say France, but um, I've seen documentaries on this guy. I am just so shot right now. I'm just like just part of like the beginning of uh, uh, underground comics. Um, they didn't have any eight ball comics at Koch Warehouse, but they did have these postcards. Dan Klaus. Film it? <laughs> yeah. 20 bucks. Great condition. Okay. Yeah, those postcards were from Koch Warehouse, but I uh, they got there first. Because, yeah, these were all from St. Mark's. Uh, not the postcards, but the rest are St. Mark's. Uh, St. Mark's Comics, uh, just west of Tompkins Park, just east of Washington Park, Washington Square, by uh, NYU. And um, they're not open anymore, but they had a great selection of everything, especially underground comics. This is uh, Sweatshop Number 1 by Peter Bag. Eight Ball is like an anthology that Dan Klaus created. Some kind of like, just take a look. I mean, it's um, some really cool, insightful sequential that uh, kind of has like a noirish, Twilight Zone-ish, weird uh, aspect that is just more than weird. It's it's um, shit. Uh, I think it's his take on people. Um, I think it's just as presumptuous sometimes as the people that uh, I think he's trying to call out. But, uh, Klaus, um, I think these guys are amazing sequential artists, but, uh, yeah. This depiction of the everyday mundane uh, Americana is right on. And I should definitely see some of the um, stories from Abel that can turn into movies. Jason Lutz. He also did a book called The Mighty... What is it? The Mighty... Gollum's Mighty Swing. Gollum's Mighty Swing. About this baseball player. And... Uh, I haven't read that since it came out. 
but he's not this, you know, Lutz, Peter Bag. They're both writers and artists. Um, Dan Klaus, you know, Chris Ware, um, Don Bode, you know, um, Harvey Picard wrote uh, his stories, but he had other people like Crumb and, um, what is his name? Dumb, I think, D-U-M-M. <laughs> and uh, even, I think, Joe Sacco and just, you know, various other people do his work, artwork. Uh, Ed Piscar, too. And uh, speaking of Crumb, Robert Crumb. You know, if you wanted to ask who's the new um, comic book artist, who's the new underground comic book artist, uh, indie comic book artist, you know, I think Jim Rugg has a lot of uh, independent comic book um, experience. I think um, Ed Piscor is a really successful guy. Um... They know a lot, but you know, it's almost like I don't know if they got like a, a world to bear on their shoulders because there's not enough. I mean, there's also Ben Mara, um, Michael Fief, Fife. Um, Hold on a second. Torpedo. I read these when I was living in uh, Zagreb, Croatia, when they were just like the original square mini comics. Optic nerve. Holy shit. This is his original handmade. I got this at St. Mark's. Before the other original optic, well not original, but the, the, the printed, uh, so-called higher end optic nerve actually got printed. There was this. Right. Uh, you go to SBX, you'll get stuff like that. Uh, or just support your ind independent comic book artists. Buy their independent comic books. Um, Look, creep. I cannot. Buchi Kanepa Skydoll Fernandez Graphics books. I love in Rockets comic book. Chio Chitil, Chio Chitil, and Gina. Gina Girl's hat. <laughs> Whoa, Lily.
back down there, take cover, young lad. You don't want to look at this last gasp. This is crazy. Hello there. That comic book confidential, they interview him, I believe. Um, you've never lived unless you've read a Zippy comic. Rip off press.